Wow. So the FBI conducted 39.7 million NICS checks in 2020? How many were in 2019? 28.37 million. Wow. That's almost 11 million more NICS checks in 2020 than in 2019. How many people were first time gun buyers? Roughly 40%. About 8.4 million guns purchased in 2020 were by first-time buyers. I'm sure that all of them know exactly what they need to do to be safe with their new purchases. I'm sure that's fine. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Tactical Review. So today, we're not gonna go play with anything cool at the range. Uh, for one thing, there's two feet of snow on the range and it's bitterly cold. Uh, but for another thing, just like the rest of you guys, I'm struggling to find ammunition and yeah, we're all feeling the pinch. That said, those stats that I read off in the intro were real. With roughly 8.4 million new gun owners in the population, I thought that I would make a quick video that's just kind of a refresh for a lot of you guys or a primer on the rules of safe firearm handling. Having grown up around firearms, these rules were drilled into me from a fairly young age. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I really appreciate that background that was given. As a matter of fact, I could share stories, maybe I will at some point, of times where knowing the rules of safe firearm handling actually prevented potentially catastrophic accidents from occurring. Uh, but that's the subject for another time. For right now, let's just go over, there's only four of them. And as a matter of fact, uh, you've seen my daughters on the channel before we've gone out to the range and uh, I make sure that they go back over these rules of firearm safety every time before we head out to the range. So they're pretty simple. Let's just get underway. Rule number one, treat every firearm as though it was loaded. So this means a couple of things. Number one, we don't just take a firearm and be flagrant with it, if that makes sense. Uh, we always make sure that it reinforces the other three rules that we're gonna get to, but we just, we're never flippant with a firearm. Okay, another thing that means is that every time we're handed a firearm, assuming that it's loaded, we're always going to check whether or not the chamber is clear. So, for example, magically appearing in my hands is my Taurus TX-22. Were I to be handed this firearm, first thing I would do would be to eject the magazine. Now, I can see, obviously, that there are no rounds in the magazine. But that does not mean there's not a round in the chamber. So the other thing I would do would be to either rack the slide several times, you've probably seen me do that on the channel, or lock the slide open and visually inspect the chamber, possibly including sticking my pinky in the chamber. Now the TX-22 has a rather small ejection port, kind of difficult to get my finger into that aperture. What about being handed a uh, pistol caliber firearm or a rifle? Such as the Palmetto State Armory AKV. Well, we would run a similar check. First thing, eject the magazine. Now in this case, it is loaded, particularly with Hornady Critical Defense. So what's the status of this chamber? I don't know. We will get the firearm to a position where I can check the chamber and visually inspect the chamber. So on and so forth, with every firearm I'm ever handed, 
I visually inspect the chamber for myself. This has actually caused some annoyance at the gun stores uh, when I, where I've been window shopping and asked to look at multiple firearms. And after the third or fourth firearm I was handed, uh, the clerk was like, you just saw me inspect that chamber. I said, yes, and then you saw me inspect the chamber. Now we've both seen that the chamber is clear and I'm still going to treat this firearm as though it's loaded. The fact is, is if, if you would research through firearms accidents, accidental shootings, so you would find a recurring theme of individuals saying, I was sure that that firearm wasn't loaded. The fact of the matter is, is that rule number one states that we always treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Rule number two states that we never point a firearm as something we are unwilling to destroy. I phrase that rule the way that I do because I feel like it makes a clearer statement of intent than some of the other ways I've heard that rule phrased. I don't state it as never point a firearm as something I don't want to shoot or I don't want to kill, etc. Let me give you an example. Uh, to kind of clear up what I'm trying to say here. Hypothetical situation. I hear noises in my house at night, so I grab a firearm and I respond to the noise. I'm not saying that's the best response in every situation, uh, but for the for the uh, purposes of this illustration, that's what we're going to say. So I have responded to the noise that I hear in the night. I bring my firearm to bear. I trigger my, my white light flashlight. And I see that it is a stranger in my house. At that point, I bring the muzzle on target and then clarify intent and then I move forward from there. Let's pause at that point. Do I necessarily want to shoot this intruder? The fact of the matter is, no, I don't want to shoot anybody. Ideally, in this hypothetical situation, we can clarify all intents and uh, solve the situation with only verbal commands and possibly a police response. So knowing that I don't want to destroy, then why have I pointed my firearm at this individual? And that is because given the fact that this is an individual who is in my home uninvited in the middle of the night, I have no idea whether this individual intends harm to myself or my family. Though I don't necessarily want to take the shot, I am in fact willing to destroy the target. All right. So never point a firearm at something you're unwilling to destroy. Rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Sometimes I say it this way, keep your booger hook off the bang switch till you're ready to make noise. I do that because it makes my kids laugh and I think that they're more likely to remember it because they thought it was funny. Very little drives me as crazy as when I'm watching a movie and I see the street smart cop walking around with his finger through the trigger guard, on the trigger, just, I don't know. Like I said, uh, these are rules that were drilled into me from a young age, and so when I see them so flagrantly violated, it just really bothers me. It bothers my suspension of disbelief in the movies, and so on and so forth. So, once again, if you are getting your, your grip on a firearm, if you're not ready to fire, rest your trigger finger 
on the frame above the trigger on you can do the front of the trigger guard if you'd like i don't like that because if your finger slips you're in on the bang switch all right so you know let's say uh with an ak pattern i i wouldn't do that i would still just keep it up there matter of fact i would keep the safety engaged until i was ready to fire uh just me on a lot of striker fired pistols uh, i typically use I typically shoot things like Glocks and the M&P series, uh, polymer striker fired. Uh, they typically have a blade safety on the trigger rather than a manual safety to disengage. Uh, the TX-22 does have the manual safety. A lot of times I will keep it in the holster uh, with the manual safety disengaged, but there again, typically it's only going to be loaded when I'm at the range. All right. So, rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And now finally, rule number four states to know your target and what lies beyond. You know, why is that important? Well, the fact of the matter is that every bullet that exits your firearm has a receipt attached you can't see that receipt but until that bullet quits moving it carries a receipt for an amount up to and including your freedom for the rest of your life we're responsible morally and legally for every round that exits our firearm and so what that means is, if I have this firearm sitting here and it's pointed at a wall that's off screen that you guys can't see, um, and with these being, again, I've showed you the chamber is empty, and with these being defensive loads that are in it, it would very likely, I would hit that wall which is drywall and studs on the other side of it there's a, a solid wood dresser and then which is filled with clothes and then another drywall wall it's exterior very likely that round would not penetrate through all of those walls and in the direction it's pointed it's unlikely that anybody would be in a lethal zone if I turned it that direction, on the other hand, well, those are all interior walls that are just thin drywall. And if, these, if this was loaded with ball ammunition, who knows how many walls it would go through before coming to rest. And what if one of my family members was in between those walls and where the bullet would have come to rest? I'm responsible for that. As a matter of fact, I've even been called out on the video where I was zeroing my uh, Holosun pistol optic uh, because of the fact that for purposes of that video, I had that laser, which was in the bore of the firearm, pointed at the back wall of my residence. It was pointed out to me that because that back wall, I could not possibly know what was on the other side of that. And thus, I was pointing a firearm at a wall not knowing. The laser bore cider uh, gave me evidence that there was not a live round in the chamber, uh, but I do own the fact that was a that was a minor violation of the rules of firearm safety. Now that we have the four rules of firearm safety under our belts, I want to take into consideration some times that it might be appropriate to consider, to consider some minor deviations. Very recently, I heard a retired Navy SEAL say Rules are a starting point to deviate from. Do not deviate from the rules due to laziness or ignorance. So, 
times that I would violate these rules. Uh, the rule to treat every firearm as though it's loaded, I'm, as much as I'd like to say never, I actually just discussed that uh, when I was zeroing my pistol using a bore sighter, I had the visual confirmation of the bore sight laser that there was not a live round in chamber. As such, I was a little more flagrant with my handgun at that moment than I would ordinarily be. As such, I was willing to point it at a wall beyond which I did not know what was. Okay? Uh, rule number two, never point your firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy. Unless you count the aforementioned I have visual confirmation outside the firearm that guarantees that there cannot be a live round in the chamber, I don't know that I'd ever really deviate from that. That rule can also be stated as always make sure your firearm is pointed in a safe direction. And maybe that's the best way to say that. All right, because ordinarily at another human being is not a safe direction. However, if that human being is attempting to harm you or your family, having a firearm pointed at that individual is probably the safest direction. Okay, how about rule number three? Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Well, striker fired pistols are a perfect example of that. Rule number one, treating it as though it's loaded, I'm going to check the chamber. Rule number two, point it in a safe direction. But rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Well, if you've never taken down a striker fired pistol, in the vast majority of them, you have to first release the spring pressure on the striker. And the only way to do that on the vast majority is by pulling the trigger. And so I will take the firearm that I have just confirmed, not loaded, point it at the ground in my case is a guaranteed safe direction. It would go through the floor, into the crawl space and embed itself in the dirt. But maybe you live in an upstairs apartment. In that case, at the floor is not a safe direction because I do have to squeeze the trigger, which you will hear from off screen. At that point, I now have, again, it's a dead safe direction. I've got a dead trigger. And then I would need to pull back so I could pull the takedown tabs so I could take down the firearm. Hey, we'll get more into some of that probably in a later video. Uh, but that is absolutely one situation where I would have my finger on the trigger when I was not otherwise intending for the firearm to discharge. A dry fire practice is probably a very good example uh, where you will very likely be pulling the trigger with a knowledge that you have unloaded your firearm, you know, you're probably pointing at a target that you would rather not destroy, but it's still not a living target. Again, rules are a starting point to deviate from, but never deviate from the rules due to laziness or ignorance. I guess that's the, the best way to wrap this up. Uh, of course, once again, I've talked about times that I would deviate on the first three rules. So the final rule being uh, know your target and what lies beyond. Again, if you can consider pointing a firearm with a, with an, a visual laser in the bore at a wall, I, I mean, there, there, there are times that I am sure that I have violated that rule. Uh, and as far as to violate intentionally, and that would probably be one. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. If you are one of the roughly 8.4 million first time gun owners in the last year or so, welcome to the family. It can be a very safe and enjoyable hobby. It can be the most 
equalizing way to defend yourself and your family. And I want to congratulate you for taking that personal responsibility and understanding that you are in fact your own first responder. I hope this little bit of a primer helped you out. And uh, if you're a longtime gun owner, but maybe somehow you're hearing all of this for the first time, commit these to memory. They're not hard. Treat every firearm as though it's loaded. Always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction, aka never point your firearm at an object you're not willing to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire and always know your target and what lies beyond. Guys, if you appreciate the kind of content that you find here at Tactical Review and you'd like to help out the channel, the easiest and the free way is to go ahead and hit that thumbs up button down below the video player, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell on YouTube so you see when we upload new content, and hey, share the videos, comment on them. The YouTube algorithm really likes community engagement. Speaking of community engagement, why don't you go ahead and head over to your preferred social media platform as long as you see it on the screen below. And go ahead and give us a follow over there. You'll get some behind the scenes looks and just a great way to engage directly with the channel. Not to mention, anytime there's any kind of giveaway or current events or anything that I feel like you guys need to know about, that's going to be how I'm reaching out to you guys. If you'd like to pick yourself up some channel merchandise, you can head over to store.tacreview.com. While you're there, you can pick up stickers, you can pick up shirts, and go ahead and just bookmark that and check back every so often because we're always uploading new designs and getting new products available to you guys. And then finally, if you would like to support the channel directly, help buy things like studio equipment, editing equipment, firearms, accessories, ammunition, anything like that, the best way to do that is over at Patreon or Subscribestar. That link is on your screen and it's down in the description below. You can sign up at any level. You'll get early access to the videos, direct communication with us here at the channel, and you'll know that you're part of helping out the entire community that benefits from videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, shoot straight, stay safe. So the FBI conducted 39.7 million background checks in 20... Hi, Smokey. Well, I'm happy that you're happy, but this is not how this intro was supposed to go.